Hi everybody, I'm Kate Snow. I'm in Dayton, Ohio right now, and actually in front of Ned Peppers, and this truck drives by and see. And there's a pretty big crowd of media out here right now. The streets actually reopened today. This is, of course, the site of that horrific mass shooting on early Sunday morning, basically Saturday night, um, which ended up killing nine people, wounding today we learned more than 30 people. Uh, there's a lot going on here in terms of the investigation, and I'm happy to take your questions if you have questions for us. I'll be reporting for Nightly News uh, just shortly, in about an hour. But today, basically, investigators are trying to figure out why the 24-year-old gunman came through an alley, came down the street, um, armed to the teeth and wearing a bulletproof vest, and just started shooting at people. He killed nine, as I said, including his own sister. Um, and it was interesting, today the police chief was asked about that and said, you know, it doesn't make any sense. We don't know, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, we don't know if he didn't recognize his sister or if he intentionally targeted his sister or, or what happened. They are out at his home today. The police have been out at his home, which is in a suburb of Dayton, about a half hour away. And they've been searching his home. We were expecting we might hear from the family. Their, their name is the Betts family. Um, we haven't yet heard from them. We did hear from the police chief out there uh, in that suburb of Dayton. Uh, not a whole lot of information, although we are learning more from friends and colleagues of his. Uh, my colleague Gabe Gutierrez interviewed a classmate uh, of Connor Betts, the shooter. Uh, and I, I hesitate to even say his name because we're, we're not trying to glorify him, but just in terms of the investigation, um, a classmate of his told us today uh, that he was, he described him as a loner, as an outcast. He said that he was had violent tendencies. And that's according to a former classmate of his in high school. There are other reports today, the Associated Press uh, reporting that this, this person um, had a past in high school where he had created a, a hit list, essentially, of people that he wanted to hurt, and even worse, a, a list of women that he wanted to sexually assault. NBC News hasn't been able to independently verify that, but the Associated Press is reporting that. Uh, the Dayton local newspaper is reporting part of that as well. So. Again, a lot of questions about the motivation. What, what what was he doing here? Why on earth did he do this? And more importantly, the families of nine people who are destroyed. I talked with one of them today, uh, a man who lost his wife here. Uh, it was a really painful conversation. He was crying. He said, she was my whole life. She was my whole world. And I get a phone call at four in the morning that, that my wife is gone. So you can imagine all these families trying to come to terms with this. At the same time, you've got a community here that is trying to move forward, and, and the reason they open the street is because they want to show strength. They want to show that they will not be cowed by someone with a gun. So that's kind of what's happening here. If anyone has any questions at all, Molly, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to take them. Um, we're going to have a full report coming up on nightly news as we learn. It's very, very clear. We also learned today about how much ammunition the shooter had, that he had 250 rounds on his person. When he died, he was killed by police right over there, right outside that bar. And the mayor told me yesterday that had he gotten into the bar, which is apparently what he was trying to do, he was moving down the street and trying to push into that bar, there were hundreds of people inside. The mayor said he might have killed hundreds more people if he had been able to get in there. So a lot of praise for the Dayton police force. Um, I saw people at the vigil here last night hugging police officers because they're they're just so thankful. I talked to two girls, who, two young women who were on that corner right there when everything happened, on that patio, and they hear the gunshots, they think it's fireworks, and when they figured out what it was, they ran inside that door right behind me. They're hiding like on the ground, face down. They can see the feet of the police officers as they took the shooter down, and they, they were crying about how it could have been them, that they were so lucky um, to be in the place that they were. So it's just a horrific situation, um, but one that Dayton is hoping the country can learn from. A lot of people here um, saying that there, there are lessons in all of this and, and policy decisions that need to, be, need to be made. And we'll have much more on nightly news.